Hello, welcome to my channel. Today I'm painting pink roses, blue hydrangeas in a blue glass vase and I'm very pleased with the way the glass turned, the vase turned out. It's very glassy and has a lot of reflection, a lot of light to it. So I'm happy with that aspect. If you enjoy the video, please give me a like, share and subscribe. It helps my channel grow. I'd really appreciate that. And if you've already subscribed, thank you so much. I'm very appreciative of my subscribers. I'm using a 9 by 12 inch canvas panel and acrylic paint. And I have my usual palette of titanium white, primary yellow, raw sienna, raw umber, French ultramarine blue, sap green and alizarin crimson. Sometimes I add other colours to these, but I think with this particular painting, these are the only colours that I used. I started out painting my background using the French Ultramarine Blue, the primary yellow, which sort of mixed here and got a greenish colour. And I did a tabletop using raw umber at the very base of the painting and raw sienna, sort of an ombre kind of effect. And... Um, I made sure that that tabletop line was nice and straight, like a horizon line. Um, it could be a beat up table with a few chips out of it, but I like a nice straight line to indicate where my background ends and my table begins. As I was doing this, I dipped my brush into water every now and then. It's much easier to spread that paint if you've got a wet brush it's very hard on a canvas um, to move the paint around if you've got a dry brush you get a different effect with it and um, I'm okay with the effect I got which was quite smooth quite watery looking and I'm happy with that I want the background to be more faded, so I'm putting titanium white on it and using a crisscross stroke. I'm just covering the entire top two thirds of the canvas. I'll leave the table area alone and I'll just do the top of the canvas to give me a sort of misty, misty light uh, behind my flowers. I didn't do it today, but I quite often use a powder brush to give me a soft blended effect. I get them from the dollar store and they only cost me a dollar, well a dollar twenty-five I think at the moment. I buy like half a dozen or so and they're big, soft, round and just perfect for blending and very, very cheap, which I love. So that's it for the background. Um, it's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to soft blend it today. And I didn't do a sketch for this painting. I'm using a three quarter inch flat and straight uh, French ultramarine blue. I'm doing three lines down for the body of the vase, a line across for the top and another um, circle for the bottom. And you use your brush for all of this and just twist the brush round for that circle at the bottom and uh, use the edge of the, the brush for the line across the top and across the base and let your brush do the work for you. I'm not going to worry that the colours are not even. Glass isn't even when you look at it. It's got all kinds of reflections of different things in there. Different light makes different colours, um, different shades rather. And um, that's what's happening with this vase. I haven't got as much paint on my brush, so it gives me a paler blue. Maybe I've got a little titanium white mixed in there with it. I picked it up somehow. Um, 
You don't have to worry about things like that. Glass isn't all one colour throughout. And it would look strange if it was. It would look like a ceramic vase rather than a glass vase. I'm pretty pleased with that shape. It looks quite even and um, yeah, I'm happy with that vase just as it is. I won't do anything else with it except add light and reflections to it. For my roses, I'm putting on an alizarin crimson base and I will mix a little amount of that color with titanium white to give me a pink to pull in the petals. And then for a highlight, I'll use straight titanium white. Um, alizarin crimson is very transparent and um, the titanium white added to it gives it an opacity which helps with the petals and the highlight. I'm using French ultramarine blue and just painting a base of that on for my hydrangeas. This is not the way I usually paint hydrangeas. I usually do sort of a petal shape all the way around. I'm just being a bit lazy today and I'm just putting the base in and allowing the alizarin to um, mix in to give me sort of a slight purple colour here and there. It all adds the mixture of the paint, all adds interest to the painting. I'm using my brush to shape the leaves and sap green and um, I'm not sure whether these are hydrangeas, I think these are the rose leaves. And I'm letting the brush do the work. I'm just flattening it out, flattening the brush out as I pull it in from the outer edge in toward the center. That's how I work all my petals and leaf shapes. I pull the stroke in from the outer edge in toward the center vein or in toward the center of the flower if it's a flower I'm painting. I'm going to pull in some petal shapes on the hydrangeas. I've mixed a pail of blue and I'm using a large round for this. You could also use a filbert, which is a flat brush with a rounded top. And that works very well for petals as well. But today I'm using a round and um, I don't know what number it is because most of my brushes are very old and the numbers wear off fast. So I'm just putting petal shapes on paler ones where the light is coming from the right and darker ones on the left hand side of the picture where it's in shade or more shade. I'll do this a couple of times. Um, it gives it that fluffy look that you want your hydrangeas to have. You don't want anything that looks too stiff and static. Um, to get that fluffy look you need to put a couple of layers at least. I've mixed a pale blue. I'm using that same hydrangea pale blue for the light on the reflected light on the left side of the vase, which is basically in shadow. And I'll use bright titanium white on the right side of the vase. I'm using a flat brush to pull the paint around to um, accentuate the curve of the vase. If you have your all your strokes going down, it will make vase look skinny pulling the paint around the vase and I need a little water to do this um, accentuates the curve of the bowl Now I have a lot of light on there, but I've taken away too much of the color. So I'm going to add some French ultramarine blue, which is another transparent paint. And um, I'll put it on the center and where I think um, it's in shadow.
I'm using uh, alizarin crimson, titanium white and a little touch of raw sienna to bring that pink down a little bit. Um, the alizarin on its own is quite strident really. It gives a very bright pink and if you add a brown to that or a yellow um, or a green you can bring that colour down to a softer pink. I start with the outer petals and work my way in toward the centre and then I do the petals that are underneath the flower closest to us and um, at the very end I go in with straight titanium white and pull in those very high lit, highlighted petals, especially all the ones that are closest to the light source. The light is coming from the right and I'm, I've am i got this uh, rose way too dark so I'll have to add a titanium white to it to make it, to brighten it up a bit, make it more highlighted. As the titanium white dries it dulls down a little bit so I come back in two or three times to brighten that up until I get it to a level I, I need that value to be and um, it sometimes takes me two or three goes to do that and um, it's not something you can worry about it's just a fact of life that's how that paint dries it dries darker Putting in highlights and shadows is not something you need to worry about. My method is to paint a mid-tone all over my painting and then go in with my shadow and then at last of all my highlight. That's the way I usually work and sometimes I don't. And um, sometimes I get it wrong and I stand back, look at my painting and think, oh that's well lit and it should be in shadow. So I'll go back and I'll change it. It's okay to change things in your paintings. For the centre of the roses, the stamens, I usually start off with raw sienna and dot that in with a small round. And then I put a alizarin crimson on top of that and sometimes if I think about it I'll mix up a brighter colour, an orange, and put that on the very top. I didn't do that in this case, I just left it with the raw sienna and the alizarin crimson. Um, but adding a little touch of highlight doesn't harm it in any way. And I think really this is all I've done to this painting and it's not the best painting I've ever done. I think it's pretty nice actually and I'm happy with it. I could do better if I tried harder. I'm adding more highlights to it because that paint dried and dulled down a little bit and so I'm bringing back the um, titanium white to add, sort of punch up that highlight and um, yeah I think we'll call it a day. And the other thing I should say is that reflection in the tabletop also needs highlights too to make that look genuine. A 
hope you enjoyed today's video. It's only a short one, about 18 minutes long. And um, I think I got quite a few interesting things in there. How to paint petals, leaves, hydrangeas, roses and a vase. That's quite a lot of stuff actually. And I hope someone gets something from it. Please leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. And um, I do hope it's positive. And um, if you did enjoy the video, please like, share and subscribe. That helps my channel grow and I'd really appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.